Hi, I'm Dr. Risa Kagan, Clinical Professor of Obstetrics, Gynecology, and Reproductive Sciences at the University of California in San Francisco. I also practice gynecology and do research at the Sutter East Bay Medical Foundation in Berkeley, California. My co-authors and I are happy to share with you this review on patient considerations in the management of menopausal symptoms. A majority of women experience it hot flushes and or vaginal symptoms following menopause. These common symptoms can interfere with women's lives in intimate relationships. According to international guidelines and expert consensus statements, oral hormone therapy is safe and effective in younger postmenopausal women who have bothersome symptoms or who require osteoporosis prevention. Women with a uterus require a progestin to block estrogenic effects in the uterus that can lead to endometrial hyperplasia. Although progestins are effective in this regard, they are not without risks of their own, including invasive breast cancer or side effects such as breast tenderness and vaginal bleeding. Many of the risks of hormone therapy were elucidated by the large randomized Women's Health Initiative trials over a decade ago. Since then, use of estrogen progestin therapies has declined dramatically. This suggests that many women are now being undertreated. In our review, we discuss the risks and benefits of a variety of alternatives to standard oral hormone therapy, including custom compounded bioidentical hormones, vaginal and transdermal estrogens, ospemaphene for dyspareunia, non-hormonal options like paroxetine, and a number of up-and-coming investigational products. The rest of our paper focuses on conjugated estrogens and basidoxephine, abbreviated CEBZA. CEBZA takes the novel approach of using a selective estrogen receptor modulator, or CIRM, instead of a progestin to counter estrogenic activity in the uterus. In fact, preclinical studies have shown that BZA actually degrades estrogen receptors in the endometrium and breast. The efficacy and safety of CEBZA were studied in five phase three trials. CEBZA significantly reduced both the frequency and severity of hot flushes in women who were highly symptomatic at baseline. It also helped preserve bone mass. Women taking CEBZA had gains in their bone mineral density at the lumbar spine and total hip, whereas women in the placebo group lost bone mineral density. CEBZA is not FDA approved for treatment of vaginal symptoms of menopause. However, in one trial for which I was an investigator, CEBZA improved vaginal maturation index and vaginal pH, alleviated vaginal dryness, and improved ease of lubrication in women with signs and symptoms of vaginal atrophy at baseline. CEBZA studies with endometrial hyperplasia as a primary endpoint confirmed that this progestin-free therapy meets U.S. and EU regulatory requirements for endometrial safety. In addition, two studies found no increase in mammographic breast density with CEBZA compared with placebo. In contrast, CE with medroxyprogesterone acetate, which was an active comparator in one trial, did significantly increase breast density. Greater breast density can interfere with detection of breast cancer mammography and is an independent risk factor for breast cancer. Venous thromboembolism is a known risk factor of estrogens as well as SERMs. However, this risk doesn't appear to be additive when CE is combined with BZA. Stroke is another known risk factor. Across all five phase three trials with 12 weeks to two years of follow-up, there was one case of stroke and the approved dose of CEBZA compared with none of the placebo group. Tolerability is an important consideration for women selecting a menopausal therapy. In the phase three trials of CEBZA, women recorded any breast pain or tenderness in daily diaries. Results from one trial are shown here. CEBZA had an incidence of breast tenderness similar to placebo, whereas CE with medroxyprogesterone acetate had a significantly greater incidence of breast tenderness.
Participants also recorded vaginal bleeding and spotting in daily diaries. CEBZA was associated with low rates of bleeding and spotting similar to placebo, whereas bleeding and spotting rates were significantly higher with CEMPA. Breakthrough bleeding is not only inconvenient, it can lead to invasive testing, which in turn can cause unnecessary anxiety and costs. It is important to note that results seen with the FDA-approved formulation of CEBZA cannot be extrapolated to other estrogen and serum combinations or other doses of CE and BZA. The success and safety of CEBZA are based on the careful selection of the estrogen component and serum, as well as the identification of a dose ratio that provides the best balance between therapeutic efficacy and endometrial safety. So in conclusion, CEBZA is a good option for non-hysterectomized postmenopausal women who are seeking relief from menopausal symptoms. The choice between progestin-containing hormone therapy and CEBZA should be based on safety and tolerability as well as personal preference. Thank you.